some brochures with those guidelines that were provided by our friends from the Ocean Conservation Society. And I'll leave some up here. Please feel free to pick one. Uh, probably pass it off if you want. Um, we have one for boaters, one for surfers and kayakers and paddle boarders, and one is in Spanish. So feel free to come up and take one of these. And if we run out, there are more at the aquarium. So come down in case of visit and pick up a brochure down there. All right, thank you. Now I'm gonna turn the talk over to Valerie and Eric and they will talk about the challenges, dolphin challenges, natural or not. All right, hi everybody. Thank you so much for coming. We're so excited to see all these faces here to learn more about dolphins and some of their challenges, both natural and not. We are gonna start off with a few of the natural challenges and then we're gonna end with the not. So I get to go first because plankton is my favorite and we're starting with red tides. So, and I'm in the PowerPoint, so I got to put that one first. <laughs> That's the key. Um, so red tide or harmful algal blooms are caused by teeny tiny little algae called phytoplankton. They're cousins of the seaweed and kelp that we see wash up on our beaches. When they're, they're always out there, um, they're really important. So we hope they're always out there. But when we see a bloom, it's because there are just a bunch of them not reproduced all at once, and it can actually change the color of the water, hence the name red tide. Most of the time it's not even red, it's brown, and it has nothing to do with the tide, but no one ever calls me before they name things. So here we are with red tide. Now, not all phytoplankton are harmful. Most of them are completely harmless, in fact. There are a few that are harmful and can create these toxic blooms, but most of them are super duper nice and they are responsible for over half of the oxygen that we have to breathe. So they're kind of a big deal for being the smallest thing in the ocean. Um, these are a couple of my favorites. So oh, there we go. That one is a dinoflagellate, which is one that can actually kind of move around a little bit, which is fun for an algae. And then these ones, are diatoms. They make a glass box around themselves to protect themselves from predators, which I think is pretty cool. Um, they're also what I studied at graduate school, so they're my favorite. Um, let me show you a little video of when there was a red tide near the pier. Sometimes people are concerned about surfers, swimmers, or even the dolphins in marine life swimming through them. Whether or not it's a harmful algal bloom, it's fine to swim in. We are gonna talk in a couple minutes about how the harmful algal blooms can impact the dolphins and other marine mammals, but it is not from swimming. These algae are found close to the surface because they need sunlight to grow, so they wanna be at the top. If you went um, all the way down to the bottom, you're not gonna see the bloom there. Here we can see some of our dolphins swimming through it, pretty much unaware that it is there and unbothered. You can't tell just from looking like this if it's one of the algae that might produce a toxin or not. If I am at the aquarium on a day that we notice a red tide, I will always try to stick our net over, collect some plankton, and find out what type it is and if it is one of the kinds that might cause um, some of those toxic blooms. So I want to talk about which ones we might want to look out for under the microscope and how they might impact dolphins. And they can impact people too. In fact, you'll see that the um, names of the diseases they called all have to do with people and they're not super pleasant. <laughs> so the first one are our left are little lingulodiniums. They're a type of dinoflagellate, and we're still learning more about their toxins. So we're always learning new things about the ocean. That's one of the fun things. They produce a toxin called a yesotoxin, and it causes probably diuretic shellfish poisoning, which is exactly what it sounds like, so you probably don't want <laughs> it. Um, new research is still ongoing with this. They used to think it was in um, the same class as this other diatom here that produces okadaic acid with the same um, 
not so pleasant effect, but they're still learning more about this one. So it may end up in its own sort of third category. This one in the middle is a diatom that produces a toxin called demelic acid, which can result in something called amnesic shellfish poisoning. So that's just what it sounds like. It's a neurotoxin. It can affect the brain of the mammal. Now, this is all very sad, but there is a bright side, like with everything. The, some of these harmful ones, like the linealidiniums, are the ones that produce that really awesome bioluminescence. So if you see a red tide at the pier and you're able to come back at night, might as well check it out and see if it's one of the ones that produce those bioluminescence. Works just like a glow stick. You know, two chemicals bonk into each other. They only do it at night. Um, very cool if you get a chance to see it. Uh, if you happen to be out on a boat and see dolphins swimming in it, definitely my favorite thing I've ever seen in my life is dolphins in the bioluminescent glow, so highly recommend. So let me talk a little bit about how do the toxins get to the dolphins. They bioaccumulate up the food chain. This is an easier show than tell, so I'm going to show. This one. This works a minute ago. Okay, here we go. So our phytoplankton are the ones making the little toxins. So we're going to pretend these little marbles are maybe little pieces of demelic acid. They get eaten by the zooplankton. So we're going to have this zooplankton eat some, and this zooplankton eat some, and I'm sure you guys can figure out how this is going. Oh man, one of them is going to go home. 